We all want to be able to walk through a wardrobe and enter a land full of magical creatures, adventures, and the ability to make friendships that last eternities. Like Lucy from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. There was nothing more I could have ever wanted in my life when I was a child. The idea of escaping the boring town I lived in. There were no kids around for miles, and the only entertainment I had were DVDs of movies to keep my wild imagination active. I must have driven my family crazy with how many times I would sit there opening and closing the wardrobes we had around our house. It had gotten so bad my family began to lock the closet doors to prevent me from getting inside of them. I was a child, and the lack of friendship I had made me yearn for a land beyond the wardrobe. Some people would say that believing in magic and alternate worlds that we can't see is foolish, which I wouldn't disagree with, at least not until I had experienced what I did. It all started on a mid-fall day. The leaves were dying and falling from the trees. They were beautiful. Through the cold, though, my mother had told me to play indoors, which this time, my usual playtime schedule would be me pretending to be I was a wizard. With sticks I'd find on the ground in my backyard, casting spells like ghouls and goblins my brain would make up. Instead of running around that day and playing outdoors, I had decided to watch a movie. And of course, it was Narnia. Kicking back into my old habits, I had begun opening and closing the wardrobes in my house. My parents had removed the locks weeks prior to this event. I hadn't done it in a while. While opening the wardrobes in my parents' room, the feeling of cool air slipped through the middle of the cracks of the wardrobe. The smell of fresh pine resonated throughout my nostrils. To my amazement, when I opened it up, bristles from a tree were poking out of the closet. I made my way through, and what I saw next I almost couldn't believe. A land of snow, trees, mountains, and nice waterfalls. I had made it. As a young kid, you don't normally think things through. After my excitement had begun, walking through the cold, snowy world I had discovered, I noticed them while walking around the wildlife seemed strange. They wouldn't talk or anything, just stared at me with their dark, hazel eyes. Their eyes would just follow me, their heads wouldn't move on their shoulders, just the clear movement of their eyes following me everywhere I would go. I felt uneasy, but like any child around my age at the time, fear wasn't something that was constant in my life. Everything to me just felt magical. The sound of small footsteps in the snow caught me off guard, though. I turned around to find a small gray mouse jumping up and down, trying to catch my attention. It was clear to me now that the animals of this land couldn't speak. He motioned his little hands, though, telling me to stay quiet by putting his hand over his mouth, whilst using his other hand to point straight ahead to the left where I was walking. I ignored the little creature and crept my way towards the area he was motioning. From what I could tell, there was a fire rising up in the air. Black smoke filled the top of the tree lines with a mixture of snow that was perpetually falling towards the ground, and black ash scattered the area. The smell of burning wood filled my nose. When I had finally gotten close enough to make out what was going on, was when I learned I should have turned away and not got close to the wardrobe. Men were walking around a fire with iron cages with creatures inside. Giant bull-headed things smashing on the irons of the gates, letting out ungodly pleas for to be loosed. They spoke some form of language I did not understand. Even as a kid, I knew whatever was going on was wrong. As a kid, danger and death is something that doesn't come to mind. We believe we are invincible and that we are born for destined greatness. The belief that we are untouchable in the face of true evil. I was foolish. 
Seeing this as a sign of my true purpose was the thought of helping whatever creatures were in those cages. It's easy to not be spotted when you're a child. I was easily able to slip myself under the cold frozen snow. The constant perpetual falling of the snow kept me hidden due to the limited vision. I had found myself up to the cage near one of the guards that were watching it. It was held together by a sliding lock and was forced down. I lifted it and slided it to free the creatures inside. They were massive. I didn't get a good look until I had opened the gate. A black bull man with a massive metal nose ring was staring at me. He threw me to the side with great force, and that's when I learned that I wasn't invincible. I'd slammed my ribs against a rock on the ground. Later I found out I'd broken a couple of ribs. I screamed in immense pain which caused the men to notice me and the bull creatures. Red mist filled the air as they rose their weapons and attacked the bulls. Their attacks could hardly do anything to these creatures. Screams echoed throughout the forest. Crimson stained ground when all its hope was lost, I thought. The little mouse from before helped me get to safety. Other mice distracted the bull creature and kept them away from me. When I was able to stand up on my own two feet, I tried to run, but it was more of a speed walk due to the immense pain I was in. The animals from before that I saw had begun following me. I could hear the snarling and snapping of their mouths as they growled and barked at me to leave their domain. It was wrong for me to ever come into this wardrobe. I had known nothing that now that what I had found was not the world of fantasy I had wished to be in. This world was something cruel. As an adult now, I truly believe there is no world with absolute happiness. Without the little mice helping me, I know I wouldn't have been able to escape. I could hear the tiny squeaks echoing around me as I watched the snow move. The little white mice jumped onto the animals that had begun to chase me. I made it back to where I had first found myself, but nothing was there. No wardrobe. I realized I had no clue of which way I had came in from. The snow had fallen so much, I couldn't find my original footprints. The pain was unbearable. I found myself blackening out from it. The cold filled me. I was sure this was the end of my story. There was no happy ending, but that's when I awoke outside of the wardrobe. My mother was holding me, telling me not to worry, and I was rushed to the hospital. Doctors and nurses explained to me that everything I had seen wasn't actually there. I must have fallen when playing and banged myself up too much. I had believed them for the longest time, but looking back on it now, playing around in that house would have not caused the injuries I had sustained. I don't know what took me out of the wardrobe or if any of that was actually real. Over the years, I have kept the wardrobe though and hopes to find some answers to what had happened. Every time I get curious, I open and close it, but to no avail. Just the same old clothes I had put in it. Something was different recently, though. There was a mouse-sized hole in the back of the wardrobe which had been missing with me recently. Due to the fact that there is nothing on the other side of the hole besides a wall, but when I put something through it, it's like it doesn't end. I'm unsure of what is on the other side. If it's the place I was at before, I'm sure to not return. I've left little pieces of cheese on the other side of the hole. If all of that was real, thank you for saving me. A stranger to your world. A trespasser on your land. I hope you're doing well.